What is good? We're back. We got Matt back in the seat. We got Jay Wayne over there with a fresh crack. And we got our guy, Jay Mike. How you doing, buddy? You're happy to be with you guys again. Uh, listen with my family from the from the far east coast. Uh, happy to kick it. So thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate you joining us. Always a good time. Always looking forward to it. And always our pleasure. Um, pleasurable, pleasurable. Today we're going to jump around a little bit, a couple different topics, have a little bit of fun, uh, but we're going to kick the show off with talking about some of these, you know, older running backs and you know the landscape of dynasty fantasy football and and how these guys have really been dominating it for a while and and you know what how we see that changing changing what, of the what, guard, what to do with it moving forward, all those kind of Q's and A's. Um, so. What you got? You didn't like the Q's and A's? If you want one of these... Usually it's like P's and Q's. One of these fine t-shirts, you can go to revelrybrewingco.com and uh, get yourself one of those. Or you Ah, shit. I forgot to make a drawing. Mm. You have to tune winner. in next week. Typical. Uh, <laughs> um, but you That's can, now becoming a bit. Just yeah, <laughs> tune yeah. in next week for the drawing. Yep. Um, get those five-star reviews in there. You can be entered into a, a drawing for the t-shirts, any platform, uh of your pleasure and or send us a screenshot and we'll get you entered in there and we'll be drawing another t-shirt soon and if you take the time to send a twitter dm for the with a fantasy question it better have a five-star view attached to it because i'm probably not answering it (laughs) (laughs) you ask me a youtube question i'll probably answer it in the comments because that's all good for the algorithm but man a dm twitter i can't i'm like ah is there a five-star view attached to this let me get that uh, Appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz, mm-hmm. and yeah. five star reviews. All helps your boys out. If you don't want to support the team with a t shirt, support the team with Discord, um, all that other good stuff helps us out. So let's get it rolling here. Um, so, like I said, we got these older RBs, we got the Christian McCaffreys, we got the Dalvin Cooks, the Austin Ecklers. Um, you could th- probably throw Aaron Jones in there, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara. I mean, Nick Chubb's old as fuck. James Conner. Nick Chubb's like probably the youngest out of those guys. I guess yeah. CMC's right in there. Yeah. Um, Mixon, I guess you could throw in there if you're throwing all those guys in there. Dalvin. Um, Zeke's been dead for years, according to the press. Uh, <laughs> He's been pretty Lenny. dead. He's been pretty dead so Yeah, this, this is the year. first year that it's been warranted. Um, so all those kind of guys. Um, and maybe we might view them. Some people might have slightly different views on them, you know, because of how they're used and what they do as, as we move forward. But, you know, what, what, what's your process here as these guys age and, and what your thoughts are on how to proceed with those guys? And before you answer that question, Jamie, give us a shout out. Tell us where we can find you and uh, plug your, what, your, your preference. What, what, uh. Hit this man up on J, J Mike on the Twitters. I'll go ahead and say that because it's good. Strong Twitter follow. Not too many strong Twitter follows out there. But. <laughs> Appreciate you, Jay Wayne. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at J Mike Check, at J M I C Check. Uh, typically, uh, under typical circumstances, at, uh, the Open Bar Podcast, the Dynasty Dummies, mm. uh, J Mike's Journal, Dummy Blitz. Uh, things are, as we've talked pre show, a lot going on in life. So. Uh, everything's kind of, I won't say pause, but everything's kind of in a different space right now. So we're trying to figure all those things out. But yeah, on Twitter, at J Mike Check. J Mike, when's the last time you put out a journal episode? It's been a while. Bro, it's I, was, been a minute. I, I, was, I always enjoy those. <laughs> the nice 10, it's 15 minute. minute episodes. And, you, and you're talking about things that have nothing to do with fantasy football, which is always refreshing. Yeah, that's, that's some, my, that, yeah. It's just nice just to hear somebody who's in the fantasy sphere get out of the fantasy sphere for 15 minutes and be a human so i always enjoy is, those i appreciate hearing that man that's that's encouraging to me i i, I definitely have a lot <laughs> that, I, that i know i need to get off my chest and uh maybe somebody else can vibe with and maybe you can vibe with so i'm, I'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to do a much better job of getting behind this microphone and doing a little bit of work so we'll we'll see how that looks going forward where are your priorities at, Jay? Might get on it. I know. <laughs> it's not like you got kids. Trying to raise his family, kids and jobs. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Just gonna stay in for my wife and everything. <laughs> um, so, as far as these elite running backs, and 
it, it's really interesting because from a standpoint of when I got started in Dynasty is the same year that Christian McCaffrey was coming in as a rookie. So this is what, six, five, six years ago, six-ish years ago. Mm-hmm. And a lot of sentimentality is, is attached to that group. And this group of guys that we basically watched go from outstanding players in college to absolute superstars and guys that you are fighting to roster uh, left and right, Wh- whatever the format, Uh, DFS, best ball, redraft, dynasty, whatever it may be, you want these guys. And so now we're at this place and obviously all of us have developed strategies over the years or, you know, pillars by which we play the game, right? By which we interact with our league mates, all those different things. And we come to this crossroads now where these guys are uh, hitting us with the T.I. and Justin Timberlake uh, dead and gone uh, pretty soon. (laughs) And so now the question becomes, how do we treat essentially the, the the vanguard of the fantasy football space? And I wish I had a good answer for where I'm at. And a lot of times the, I think the cop out is, oh, it depends on the league. Am I rebuilding? Am I sure. competing? All these different things, like the, the things that we default to. But I do think, obviously on a case-by-case basis, what we do now I think in, is instructive as to how we see these next couple of classes coming through, because a lot of people are talking about 23 and 24. Mm-hmm. Are they? And I know. <laughs> is, tw- is 23 oh supposed to be God. a good class? Here we go. Is it yeah. supposed to be good? Are they all in yeah, the Hall of Fame already? <laughs> they say we've got 2020 all over again. So I, I just think it's an interesting discussion to be able to have when it comes to these guys, these elite running backs, the Ecklers, the CMCs, the Chubbs, the Henrys, the Cooks, all these guys. Mm-hmm. It's gonna. It, it happens sooner than we typically want it to, and it typically happens suddenly. So now what? What 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 are we doing here? Yeah, I got a thought here. So we we've, we've had this discussion over the years, right? It's like, what do you do with this aging running back? And we, we it's it's a great topic to revisit. And part of me though thinks that, are, like, are, are any are these guys gonna like buck the trend? So I know J Mike. Well, they, uh, I, that's what I was gonna lead off with. Is they they kind of are because they going, have already going right? into this season. There was so much. There was a lot of people pointing to these guys. There's age brackets and how the amount of RB ones or RB twos that have come out recently in this age bracket are basically one or two. And right now, seemingly these guys are bucking the trend a little bit. So sorry. Continue. Well, and and. Foreman here has made us very aware of J. Mike's stance on, you know, wanting to avoid running backs on their second contract. A lot of these guys we're talking about are on their second contract, maybe even third. And like Derrick Henry, for instance, I've been I'm like, man, he's getting old and he's got this big body and, you know, like he's going to fall off at some point. I feel like I've been saying that for way too many years, you know, and now he's like 29 with his with a plate screw foot. And it's like it really feels like you should be saying that, but like, man, is there a point where we should stop doubting these elite fucking players? That like there are guys that have gone at later into their careers and performed well. Matt Forte had his best season at age twenty eight. Now that's a shorter list, but these guys have been at the top of the game for a while. Like, are we have we been jumping the gun saying maybe you should sell these dudes if you can get a good return and you're rebuilding, you know, like what do you think? Well, I think I think that that does tap into a lot of what uh, our homie Zach Reed uh, says in terms of the different types of value that we're looking at on our teams, right? So when it comes to the, the value in terms of trade value or value to the actual uh, roster or in your dynasty market of your league, the, the, these guys no longer fetch like it, like even Saquon. I, obviously, I think Saquon's kind of come back into the space where people yeah. are like, OK, mm. I'll, I'll pay kind of whatever to be able to get to Saquon, because right now what he's doing is like, yeah, like, oh, remember super Saquon? Remember Saquon? Right. Fucking awesome. he, he, was, he was like the number one startup pick there like a couple years ago. Yeah. Never forgot. But, but but all in all, I feel like yeah, taking right? him to prom. Happy Valley, here. right? No, I took him uh, to yeah, a dashboard but, confessional yeah, concert. Well, was, yeah. Is that better than Brom? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But, but but all in all, getting laid afterwards guys, either way. Sorry, go ahead, Jim. No, you're good. These these guys don't fetch what they used to in trades. So then you're you're not necessarily stuck per se, but it now becomes a possibility that 
this this guy may retire on my roster or maybe ending his valuable, most productive time on my roster. And I don't really love from a strategy standpoint that that be the case because they have all this value that they typically have on a year to year basis in their first several years. And now, obviously, you've 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 squeezed the you squeezed the orange, all the juices out, right? And now we're just living on. All right, can I can I get some of this zest off of here? So can I get just a little bit more use out of this thing? So that that's kind of where where I'm at. But I'm again, I'm, I feel like I'm waffling to a degree. But I, I I think that there's something to be said for being able to obviously have these guys on your roster. But if they're flashing things, are are you good with them just riding out on your roster? It's so hard to figure out that calculus, whether it's where, when the, when that, when it crosses over between their actual, where the production is still here, it's still flatlining and their value is going down. It's so, I mean, we don't know when that, when that's going to, when their production is going to finally be less than what their worth is. Because just, just like we're talking about here, I mean, these guys are still weekly RB ones, RB twos, week in, week out, but they're not going to fetch right much in terms of future production. So, at what point are you just gonna like, look, I'm just going to let these guys die on my roster, and I can just squeeze literally all the pulp out of them, like you were just talking about, Jim, like where I'm squeezing every last drop out of them because I can't get anything for them. So, what's the point of moving them if I can still get RB two production out of these guys? Would I rather have an RB two in my roster or a 2024 second? Right, I want the RB, I guess. But like and you hit the nail on the head. Like you you aren't going to get the return on a lot of these guys because the notion is that you shouldn't be purchasing a, a top end like like an older running back, right? You, and so that's where it sucks like if you're in a rebuilding position and you have some of these guys, like you might have to cut bait at less value than you feel comfortable with just so that they don't die on your roster. But like you know, I got a team with Alvin Kamara, and I started off 0-4. But the sixth spot isn't determined by points or isn't determined by win-loss in that league. It's determined by points, and I'm holding the sixth spot in a playoff seat right now. And I have Swift been sitting on my bench, and I have Keenan Allen been sitting on my bench, and I have, like, some players that, that could come back and, and – really make me help me make a push and then when they get in the playoffs it's like a point total point situation so like i want to like i was like oh shit finally kamara had a good game maybe we could string another one good together and i should be maybe shipping that motherfucker off and same with like keenan allen but like man i might be able to push here so like do i want to cut bait or do i want to just keep trying to to score points and secure a playoff spot and see what happens like but if you're rebuilding you might have to cut bait a little less value than you want, you know? Yeah. So to that point, you know, you're, you, you're going to try to probably wait until you can find the opportune time to make that move. You know, you might maybe get caught holding the bag, but you could probably sell for a little less than uh, the player's worth. Um, so, yeah, if you're rebuilding, you certainly want to try to, to get out of there. Um, I guess what's 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 sort of interesting is like, you know, I think we talk, we've talked about it over the last couple of weeks is like there's there's almost a stigma in Dynasty, especially in the, you know, rooms that we're in and the space of fantasy community or whatever that like. Um, it's not cool to win. Right. It's almost not cool. To, like, <laughs> I, f I feel like peop nobody ever nobody ever wants these old guys and nobody wants to be trying to like it seems like in so many leagues everybody's always rebuilding. Nobody wants to do a deal because, oh, I'm rebuilding, yada, yada, yada. Now, when I go over to my home leagues, the three or four of those, Derrick Henry got traded in both of those leagues for reasonable picks. So, you know, it's an echo chamber of what's going on around here. And, you know, I get it. You know, nobody wants to be the guy caught left holding the bag because especially if you're in the expert room because you look like the idiot and everybody's just trying to not look like the idiot. Now, to your point, to stay ahead of the value is I understand that part of it, too. I probably lay a little bit more on the side of, hey, if I got one of these really good guys, um, I'm going to hold them until I see the point of my team being honest with myself is is I don't think I'm in the position and I need to capitalize on the value. So it is yeah. a little bit of a case by case scenario, but it's also, you know, like I said, 
Saquon just came back to life. You know, it's yep. it's it's going to be you know Austin Eckler right now is probably holding reasonable value. Maybe not in your expert league or whatever, but like in your home league, like somebody would trade you a decent amount for Austin Eckler. If Dalvin Cook puts together two or three more games like this, like, you know, the value will go back up. Barkley's value went up. Uh, like I said, the I don't know. I don't have the trades in front of me that uh, King Henry was traded for, but it was it was a decent amount. Like it, I, I was upset about the trade because I was like, damn, that <laughs> in my opinion, that was a terrible trade. But like these are. These are also just regular dudes playing fantasy who get, you know, they, and they, these they are enjoy bigger it. money leagues too. And, and you don't want to just rebuild a lot when you're paying one hundred twenty five, one hundred fifty dollars a year. If you're paying if you're playing for 20, 30, 50 bucks, you can, you know, you can rebuild for a few years and that not hit you too hard. But when it's one hundred fifty, two hundred fifty dollars, like or you more. might want to buy a fucking running back to try and <laughs> fucking win. Like, yeah, it's and, and I do. Go ahead. And, and let me ask this too, Jay Wayne, because I because I think you brought something up that's really interesting too. Uh, and I'm I'm trying not to go down too many rabbit holes. Go here, down them. That's what we when, do. This is a rabbit hole show, right, baby. Right. Let's go. Very good. Let's get in it then. When you talk about the value of simply getting in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of folks, and, and, and I don't know if it's necessarily schools of thought or if it's just depending upon the the person and they may waffle between, but like some people find a lot of value. And if I can just get in the playoffs, crazy stuff can happen over a two to three week span. Right. Yeah. Sure. I pay, I pay, you know, my, my, my leagues pay for my, you know, my league dues. I, you know, what, whatever the case is. I've been in, in the playoffs so many times with a strong fucking team and gotten ousted. I'm like, bounced. let me get, yep. let me get on that other end of this yeah, one for fucking sure. time. Yeah. Sorry, and, and, and I, no, but, but that, but that's the thing. So, then, then it becomes, okay, how, how do you value if you're not a top three seed and you've got these guys, right? You're not a top three, top four. You're a fringe playoff team. You're just fighting to get in. I think that that's what scares a lot of people is I don't, they don't want to be pushing all these assets in when I've got Dalvin Cook suspension looming, yeah. sh one shoulder hanging off of, of his body and all these different things. And at age 26, 20, you know, 26 probably is what he is at this point. He's, probably, 27. he's 27 now. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. In, in August, he turned 27. Yeah. And, and now 27. So, so then the, the, like, I, I think people have a really hard time being like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm good with being the six C because I think that maybe something can happen. I think people are just like, forget the middle. And, mm -hmm. and, and this is kind of what I've bought into over the last couple of years, too. I, I, just just to be clear, mm -hmm. I, I do want obviously if I can get in the playoffs like that's awesome. But if I'm one of these kind of weird middle teams, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm just like, all right, let me let me see what I can do about these assets and just go yeah. go crazy. Because if I can fly to the bottom, uh, it gives me opportunities to be able to, to, to build up and do some do some crazy things. So, right. I, I'd love to hear y'all continue with that. Does Dal has there been any more news on Dalvin Cook off the field? I haven't, I haven't heard a single thing either. Right, and, and, and like Alvin Kamara probably definitely has issues. a suspension. <laughs> yeah, you know, but Dalvin maybe not. But you're right about the shoulder thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think, I think sometimes with your with with trying to when you're in that middle of the pack because I have a team where I'm perpetually the for, I think for the last like three or four years I've been stuck between the five seed and the five seed in the playoffs and like the number seven. So like, I'm always like fighting for the playoffs, but like, I can't seem to get out of that purgatory. Buy a running back. Oh, well you can't, well, <laughs> but, the, but I've tried to do that. I did that last year. I sent, I sent, did two, you, I did. I sent two seconds for Joe Mixon. That's not enough, man. I wouldn't trade you Joe Mixon for two seconds. If I'm trying to win, you know, you got to give up one of them first, baby. I got to give up one of them first. No, no, sorry. That was, sorry. It was two first. It was two first. For two Joe. first? Two first. Didn't he get it done? Two first. I, I okay. did. I did. Okay. I traded two first for Joe Mixon and Michael Gallup mm -hmm. last year. So, but I'm still, I'm stuck because now I still have, a, I still have my, the Herald of 23 mm -hmm. first, but I can't mm -hmm. seem to get out of the middle because there's teams who are punting way worse than I am. But there's also the strong teams as well, too. So it's just like I feel like I'm perpetually stuck there unless I can make a huge move. But like no one's really making any huge moves because there's no parity in the league because there's four or five strong teams. There's four or five teams in the middle. 
10 layers of shit and then the bottom four teams like one of those teams hasn't scored over 80 points in a super flex league should we it's just it's just there's it's there's some really bad teams and some really strong teams and it's hard sometimes in those leagues where you're just like you're gonna be stuck in the middle unless you draft super well or there's a bunch of injuries that don't hit you so how are you like like how are you working through the middle like that that's the worst place to be in dynasty is in is in the middle yeah i think that's the thing i i just refuse i think i refuse to do uh, right now un- unless and here's the here's the funniest thing right and we and we talked through this casey you just talked about this uh sitting on a guy like uh alvin kamara and this was a, a two years ago at this point two seasons ago uh you, you have a couple of guys alvin kamara David Montgomery, uh, Derrick Henry had a team that was like that kind of a so-so team uh, falling apart at the seams, but obviously high in RB production. And I think one of the things that 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 really messes with me is if I've got these really talented running backs, then I need to either be in or they've got to go. Yeah, like that. I think that's, that's the best it. point so far. <laughs> that's it. That's it. There can't, there can't be a. I can't. It can't be tepid. Like I'm either doing all I can with these guys because they have to carry me, and if they don't and I fail, then like okay, then I'm gonna already be falling to the bottom, and then I'll offload them and figure it out, or get rid of them, and build build the asset chest while while the while the excitement for the running back because we know you're you're not trading for these running backs in the off season. No one's gonna give you what you want, and not not in the off season. It's got to be done in the season, and they've got to be balling. That's how you can maximize the running back, the running back value, right? So, so that that's where I stand. I, I don't, I don't navigate middles anymore. Either I'm, I've got these type of players, and I'm running with it, and I'm trying to maximize them. They have to carry me, and and or I'm like, hey, I don't even want to play that game. Y'all got to go now mm-hmm. while you're healthy before you sprain an ankle, miss a year and a half over some nonsense or whatever the case is. You're a CMC, you're Saquon stepping on somebody's ankle becoming a balloon like all that type of random stuff like yeah. you just don't want values to be right. tanked from that that's the worst yeah no i mean i think i think that's a, the, the good points of being middling i'll allow myself to middle for a year or two if i feel like the roster's still pretty okay and then and then it's time to definitely rip that rip that down because it really only does take a plight like you you got if you grabbed a saint brown and a Justin Jefferson at the end of drafts, all of a sudden you turn that, that, that team could be turned around quickly. You got all of a sudden you got two high end production players. And if you still have those two running backs, um, so nobody wants to get caught holding the wrong side of the value there. But I think the point you made of, of saying, if I do have these two firing good RB ones, and maybe I have, you know, another one that's could be an RB two slash RB one ish. I think you you do have to you have to be like the Rams and say fuck them picks and be like because yep. that that that's the part of I think that really drains me in fantasy a lot of the times is I feel like nobody ever says hey push that way it's always it's always talking about going the other way which I don't I don't disagree with man like I you know I, I'm fine with saying like you need to be real with yourself and you certainly like you also have to be wise with values I'm not just saying buy you know don't sell these players and, and your team just middle out and fizzle out with the value. Like if you're going to keep these players, you need to go all in the other way to, and, and again, be real with yourself and try to actually win. I, I don't think there's enough emphasis on like putting, putting the push on and, and saying, Hey, I might be, I might have to sit back, relax and enjoy my turn on this draft here. And like, maybe I only have a couple picks in this draft coming up and maybe I can make a trade in the draft to get a pick or so of somebody who I really like and could chase. But you know, not enough people are, you know, I'm, I'm not scared that like, I'll never begrudge the Rams for doing something like they're doing, trading away their picks and going all in to be like, Hey, we're going to get these talents and then we'll, we'll find, you know, some stuff in the third, fourth, fifth round of fantasy drafts here to, yeah. to which they've done, find some, which they've w- done. W- they've done a great job. And that's more like five, six, seven yeah. for them in the real draft. But I'm saying in a fantasy draft, I'll find maybe, a, you know, somebody in the second or third, I'll find the Romeo dubs, dubs uh, yeah, we'll of, find the, the of the world the, right the now. St. Brown's, right. The, the St. Brown's, the Elijah uh, Moore, Mitchell's, Mitchell, the, right. the fucking know. George Kittle. He was going to like the fourth, fifth round in drafts like that. Well, right. he's not producing fourth like round he was, pig. but yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, 
I'm not saying that I, I'll always, you know, not always, certainly I'm not always going to hit those guys, but those we were just, hit a lot those, of guys, those were just though, guys that I've been high on through the back end of drafts that, you know, you still could have figured out how to get those guys if you sold all your picks away, um, depending on what time of the year you were drafted. So, you know, I, I do think there is a lot of de-emphasis on like everyone. Nobody wants to be the asshole who traded away their first and second and and something some other future prospect who may be on the fence of being good or not to try to go all in and win because that's not you know if fantasy twitter gets a hold of that you're going to be the idiot and yada 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 but i mean i i just at some point it comes down to like i want to win man like that's you know i'm not i'm not going to sit around and be scared to play fake football like you know hey if we're if, if it's if we're paying for 500 bucks you know Maybe I might be a little bit more tepid and try to always keep, but there are, are even at that point in those kind of leagues, like there are going to be certain times where I'm just going to play my hand and try to, you know, try to do the damn thing. Um, yeah. And, and, and you are, and, and like you said, people, people really, th- those, those winter nights and the off season, it's cold, it's lonely, it's dark. It's a long time. <laughs> and the spring comes and you still got to start. Uh, like, okay, and get excited. The draft is coming. Oh, wait, I traded all my picks. Yeah. So now you got to sit all off season sour. Yeah. Right. And I think people really hate that seven months of like. But don't they man, also hate I didn't not win winning? The I went all in. Yeah. I, well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. If, yeah. if you win, it may, if you I don't win, think great. they do. I don't think I don't think people hate losing. It, to the point earlier <laughs> of, of of you know you could be. It doesn't matter. It's so. You know, it's one one or two weeks and you could be good or bad and just catch a bad matchup. I do right. like to play cumulative total points in the last two weeks just to give you a chance. So if you had a bad week, maybe you could catch it up. If I had a get decent the team first week, but. and I put myself in a good position to win and it doesn't fucking work out because this is fantasy goddamn football, like I'm okay with that, you know? What I, what I will regret is not trying to give myself the best chance to win. I feel, that, but I don't, I don't think... I'm I'm with you, Jay Wayne, and I don't think people see it that way. I think people see it as a zero sum game. Yeah. If I win the championship, it worked. It worked. Yeah. If I didn't, I regret it, and it stinks. And right. I'm not. You know, I'm. I can't. And I, I can't deal up. with that. You know, I can, I'll right. never do that Correct. again. Like with with my older <laughs> rosters, it's always like at some point I know I'm gonna have to pay the piper and I'm gonna have to eat shit. And that's basically yep. you just got to know that going into it. You and kick maybe, the pipe, the, the cap right. can down the line. Maybe you point. can recoup a little of that for not quite the cost you could have got. And maybe you wanted, maybe you didn't. But I'm OK with chasing it here and there. And I'm not saying be irresponsible and unreasonable with your roster. Um, but, you know, shit. I mean, this is we're in a home league right now. And this is the first time I've rebuilt the team. It was it probably formed. Zeke's rookie year, maybe, or maybe the year before that. That might have been the second rookie draft. Zeke's I think rookie. You had year. the option to draft Zeke. I think that might have been the second rookie draft, maybe. Um, and you know, I I I started tearing it down last year, and I'm still kind of tearing it down this year. But hell, when all when my roster, I got terrible injury luck. But my roster, I was the number one scoring team through like the first three weeks, and I'm trying to rebuild right now. Um, you know, so if, and at that point it was like, well, shit. I mean, obviously Swift got hurt, Montgomery got hurt, Mike Evans got suspended, um, you know, as well as a plethora of other other guys. Uh, but you know, sometimes it just goes like that. But you know, obviously, if you're rebuilding, you want to get rid of the best asset. You don't want CMC hanging around on your team. You don't want Dalvin Cook hanging around on your team with it because they're going to help you win if you're really trying to invest in. Hey, I want a top four pick. Um, so you know. You might have to take a little less just to get them off your rosters, you know, but you should wait most likely to, to, for a team that's ready to pounce on something. So anybody else, what, anybody got anything else on this? Should we talk some, some potential trades? Like if you're trying to make a push, which one of these guys do you want to trade for the most? Mm. You know, that you got mm. Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook. You probably don't want to try and trade for Austin Eckler right now. He has been crushing. He's the RB one right now. I think two thirty yeah. plus point games. Yeah, what right? did he put up? Five touchdowns the last two weeks. Uh, he's got. Let's we'll see here. He has, yeah, five touchdowns, two receiving, and three rushing over the last two Crazy. weeks. Thirty, 
4.9 and 35.9 the last two weeks after you know starting a little slow for Austin Eckler standards but so he, he's probably not the guy you want to go purchase right now right because he's been balling sure uh, Dalvin Cook's coming off of a one decent game after a really slow start someone might be you might could get a little deal on Dalvin he is 27 Joe Mixon hasn't been crushing it this year he's been okay Dude is a year younger than those I, other two guys. Right now, out of all those guys, that's probably the one for me where it's like there's there's at least some value, some meat on the bone where I don't have to go all in, and I know that it could get good. That offense is kind of funky and sputtering. I've been reading some some actually Cincinnati Twitter and some guys who dive into all the film there and saying like they're basically trying to recreate the offense right now and they're going through some growing pains. Um, so, you know, it could really start working out. And if that line could just get it a little bit together. Yeah, it's got to gel a little We know bit. the production could be there for Mixon. So Mixon's one of those guys where I could go either way. We got a team right now that's one and four that I thought in no way, shape, or form were we going to be one and four. And I'd be okay if some if I could get a first and, and a little something else for Mixon, I would, I would sell. But if I was going the other way, I would see if maybe I could buy Mixon. So I don't know if anybody... You know, that's that's probably the first guy that really jumps out to me. And he's a year younger than a lot of these guys. Yeah. CMC is probably a little too expensive. Plus, it's yeah. pretty volatile right now. I, I think the most attainable from this kind of list that we have, quote unquote, uh, it's probably Derrick Henry. Yep. Because like, like we talked about, everybody's been wishing wishing him death, right? Yeah, well, he's crushing too. I mean, many men. He's right. he's uh, three, three straight weeks, uh, about 25 points, basically, you know. It, but but then people think okay he's 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 not catching the ball even not like he even did last year, that's what they say, and but like you said he, he's he's still doing work even after a little bit of a slow start. Um, people were saying he wasn't quite looking like the guy with the you know the large guy with with foot problems now. Mm -hmm. Ten catches over the last three weeks. One of them was in, it was all in one week for, I think for the most. They part. had five and then three and then two. Yeah, he's right. regressing. So, so he's 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 probably the most attainable. Yeah. And again, are, what is how comfortable are you with with calling it? Hey, if this if this is it, this is then, it. Then let's go down swinging with with Henry. Are you? Would you give a twenty three first for Henry? No, not not a chance. Okay. Pro no. Probably not for me either. Regardless of where my team was, there is a chance come, you know, week 10, 12. 13 that maybe maybe I would if I if I felt like I'm strong as hell and I'm just going to try to get stronger some people will say you never do that never make that move <laughs> I don't give a fuck like what 223 seconds yeah I'd, I'd, do, I'd do that okay. if if, okay. if I feel really confident about my team and Henry's looking good Titans are still looking all right sure gotcha I don't think it's that out of the question to trade the first it's probably not the smartest thing to do well, again, I, it's not. It's not. Dynasty Twitter is going to say right. absolutely fucking going to crush you. And they're <laughs> I, snap know, I know for a fact that. that he's been traded for more than a first right. at the beginning of this season in yeah. both of those home leagues. For sure. Mm. For sure. All right. And know, it's working I, I out. Fascinated. You know, it's. I, I would probably. I would have most to. I would pass, have to be a. I would have to be a top two team, top two three team, and be like, all right, if I make this move. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm setting myself up. Like, cause like we just like we just talked about. We can't predict the future. I have to be setting myself up. Okay, if I make this move, I think I can win the league. Yeah. I have to be in that he's, position. He's I can't also be, probably gonna be pretty good next year. You know, I can't he's probably gonna have another year. So you're setting yourself up for two years of Derrick Henry to. You're hoping. Oh, you're hoping exactly. <laughs> that, that's the best that's case. We've been hoping yeah, since hope. he was <laughs> five for five straight years. It's like like you said, it does happen fast. It could it could be happening at the end of this year and yeah. be you know. We've, I feel like we've been saying that so many years. We said the same thing about Tom Brady. When is he gonna fall off? He's that's forty five. That's a wild. I get position. it, but he's forty five. Like so, in I, running I, I back think it's, years, it's fair to say Henry's the anomaly, right? Yeah, and I, and Are I think all these you, guys just, the anomaly, you know. Right now, I think Henry specifically. Henry's, Henry's like twenty nine. Yeah, right. He's Battle, on, he's yeah. only twenty eight. He'll be twenty nine in January. And his touches are his touches are astronomical. Yeah, but right? at least started off a little slow with the he touches. He did. He did. It was slow, been, and his, he he made up for it in the last. No, I'm sorry. I mean career, like career touches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, he, yeah. but the first couple of years, he wasn't doing anything. Right. You know, he was getting right. very Marco little. So, so high tread to begin his career, but then yeah. there was a made lot up of, for it. Alabama put a lot of wear yeah. on those tires too, though. <laughs> yeah, and in high school, he just I he just him. needed oh, a couple yeah. carries, and then it was a touchdown. Like he yeah. was, 
I don't, I don't think he had a, like a ridiculous amount of carries. Yeah, I, I don't. I, could, I, I don't know that, that Aaron out. Jones is super obtainable right now. Um, Actually, that's probably not the worst. What he, is, he, he, would, he hasn't been crushing it. He would be. He has not been crushing it. I got him on a team, and He'd he be hasn't been helping me. me fucking crush it. He, he had a good week, too. But other than that, 10 points, 5.7, 14.5, and 10. He had 32 in week two. But, oh. like, that's actually a pretty attainable guy right there. I guys, might feel better guys. about that than Mixon. What do you got? I, 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 Jay Wade, I think I'm with you. Let me ask this real, yeah. real quick. Just if you all had to guess. Shout out to the folks at DLF. October ADP for running backs. Where do you think Aaron Jones is? Uh, just amongst running backs. Uh, I'm going to say they hate 22. Him. I was going to say like 19. We got J-Way. Mm, I hate these things. I don't know. RB20, <laughs> RB25. Uh, okay. The, the hate is a little too strong. It's okay. RB15. Mm-hmm. So just ahead of him. Which that's JK for Dobbins September... And- October. Right. But I know, October. but that was those are September drafts that, that would have been going yes. on. So, you know, you, you didn't have to – maybe you don't factor in a couple of down weeks, you know. So that might be where the hate's coming from on our end. Okay. But, I, I, I find it because he's he's right in front of A.J. Dillon and right in front of Fournette, mm-hmm. right behind Alvin Kamara and J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, if I'm, if I'm buying one – I would like to buy the the a little bit less workload, a little bit more pass catcher. You know, just it feels a little better uh, for you than buying the Derrick Henry. But Derrick Henry's crushing. Joe Mixon's, you know, it's good. It's good for you. Yeah. So I think I think that's a I think that's a good call. Anybody? Good for you. Good for you. How about Lenny? The the only thing that really makes you super a little worried about Aaron Jones is Aaron Rodgers, but I mean you're you're playing it in a two year window, and that's that's probably about what you're getting. Lenny's a little more worrisome that if Tommy's not around, I'm probably not all that interested in in Lenny. Lenny's the new Giselle, though, right? I mean, <laughs> could be, <laughs> could be. Hips don't lie. Hips don't lie. Lenny's just Lenny's crushing. Yeah, he's catching a lot of passes. He's not even really scoring that many touchdowns right he's now. He's catching a lot of passes. He only has three on the year. That's the thing. Nobody man. wants and, to and buy the- Leonard Fournette. If you don't have <laughs> Leonard Fournette, you don't know how good he is. If you don't have him on your team, you have no idea how good he is. So if you try to buy him, you're not going to come correct to that owner who so knows it, that this man scores mad fucking fantasy It would points. It would seem that he's not super-duper old and that he might have one of the highest ceilings – points per game for all these guys that we talked about just because of his ecosystem and lack of anybody you know touching anything taking anything away from him I mean people can make Rashad White a thing as much as they want but as long as Lenny's healthy um, I'm not and I'm not hating on Rashad White by any means but like he's getting the passing volume yeah Rashad White's coming in sometimes when they're getting beat up or you know Lenny needs a a breather or they're up big Um, so Lenny turned 27 in January, so next year he could be coming into the league as a 28-year-old dude with no Tom Brady. So you can't be giving up a ton because I feel like at least with these other guys, I can make a decent case for two years, you know, at least two years. And with Lenny, I don't know, you know. You got to think that the you got to think that even if they lose Tom, I mean, obviously it's a loss, but they're not just going to be like, okay, we're giving the keys to Blaine Gabbert. They're going to make a move to get some sort of veteran quarterback. Obviously, it's not going to be Tom Brady. Oh, but Jimmy G. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Jimmy G. You know, what I mean, something like that. Fuck, give me Jared Goff. Give me Jared Goff in Detroit, in Tampa. That would be. Jared Goff remains underrated. Yeah. He was not a fit for McVay's system. Oh, lines beat Anyways, up. Anyways, yeah, but it just like. I mean, honestly, as we're going through here, sitting, the longer we sit here, the more I can talk myself into a yeah. lot of these guys <laughs> for yeah. going to chase like, I'm the thinking ring about and now, two I'm like, more years out of them. Yeah. But in a startup, you're feeling gross about it. In in a yeah. ring chasing scenario, you know, I know, you know, there's somebody's going to comment that we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. And we're I mean, idiots, Jay, when how long? But it, 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 then I'm going to go back at them too hard. In that Patreon startup, I mean, how many rounds in a row were we looking at these guys? Who were just like too many, dude. We it was like up. we should have taken Derrick Henry. Like we'd be it was fucking like crushing it right three now. Three or four, yeah. Derrick but we Henry. did get Brees and Saquon, so yeah. But imagine if we wouldn't yeah. have passed on fucking well, Derrick that, Henry. That was that was the thing that I was seeing in any startup that I did, especially later in the year this year. Was like if if you would have just went into it with the mindset of hey, I'm gonna go in and just 
grab a bunch of these older guys, and you could you could have built a sick fucking team. Yeah, we, and, and sprinkled in, lost flats doing sprinkled in that some, basically some youth. Um, you know, I think you really could have came over the top and clobbered some people on the head with just a bunch of old guys. And you know, yeah, it's Mike more of a Evans redraft and, team, but you know, you build you build the back end with some younger guys, which you know, I'm sure yeah. some people don't love, but in a year or two. You know, you eat some shit. Maybe, maybe you cashed the first two years. You're you're good for to go through some some a rebuild year yeah. for you know you shouldn't be rebuilding for more than probably two years until um, until you're back to being competitive. So you know maybe you you cashed maybe you won one and came in second on the other and you got some cash in your pocket and now you're you know you got a couple younger guys. Maybe you sold some of the older guys for pennies on the dollar and and now you're you eat shit for a year or two and and you know, you're right back to go. I, you know, obviously the sweet spot is saying, Hey, I'm, 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 I'm always competitive. I'm, I'm always, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I never, you know, I just reload. I, I don't rebuild, rebuild, you know, which, you know, I, I did that for a little while, but in the last couple of years in the home leagues, it pretty much ended me up like you were talking about and being the middling team fringe playoffs, Get in the playoffs, maybe you win one, maybe you just miss the playoffs, all those kind of things, and lands you in a purgatory of, of pick realm where you're not up to, with the value to really move back and, and conquer of maybe getting more equity or getting the really good player. Now, with that being said, the last couple drafts, first rounds have been great. If Hot you could dodge fire. like two landmines, you got a decent pick. Um, yeah. But all right, any, anybody got anything else? And we'll, we'll move on to another topic. I think I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could talk about what you should get to sell these guys. You know, <laughs> I mean, if you're you should, selling Austin Eckler. How much are you trying to get? For I mean, Austin you, I mean, your goal should be to try to squeeze a first out of any of these guys. Yeah, but I first, need more than that, right? Well, I mean, I think that's what. That's the whole thing. Is what? That's the thing, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say if someone's like, okay, I've got, I've got Henry, I've got Kamara, I've got Dalvin, and you're on a middling team, and someone's like, all right, I'll throw you a first. So that's fine for y'all. You get a first. You get well, get out. Yeah, because I mean, depend. If my team's in that way, um, then of course, man. Like you can't, you can't let it. If there's a chance to get that value at this point, maybe it's not the peak value of what he's necessarily worth on the roster, points getting wise. But next year, that number is going to look even worse. And you're not. You're probably not. Like you'd be very, very lucky to get that next year. What you're just getting this year that maybe is kind of a gift, but you don't want to take it because your pride saying, no way this guy's worth more. I'll just have him die on the roster. I'd just rather have the first. And yeah. maybe I didn't win the trade, but I'm okay. Like it's fine. I, I got some equity that's in, un, you know, insurable that can't get hurt. That can't, <laughs> you know, so. yeah. Okay. And hopefully that's you, and hopefully fine. at that point you have your own first and you're also going to be improving your own first value at that point by making your team by getting rid of some that's points kind of the, yeah. the the sword that you have to be willing to die on if you hold these guys you got to be able to be okay with losing the value on the trade and some people in that league are going to look at it as you you know oh he got too much value they would never give you that for for that guy so you yeah. know if you can, oh, I'm gonna be pissed as hell if I see Austin Eckler sold for a first I'm gonna be like damn that was too <laughs> cheap I mean Austin Eckler right now might be that outlier and CMC's a little younger so yeah. oh you better not sell CMC uh, for right. a fucking no, first right. no 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 I don't think anybody but Eckler's probably the outlier like you could get more than a first for Eckler for for sure he's coming off like three thirty bangers so, so okay but some right. of these other older guys that we yeah. talked about. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, and I was, I, I'll leave it at this. Take us out of here, Jay Mike. The, the guys like Eckler, CMC, specifically these guys who are pass catchers, we also talk ourselves into thinking, okay, they still have contingent value even if they're not being workloads. Hey, could they be the B side of a committee like a Kareem Hunt? Right. Right. Like current Kareem Hunt's balling, uh, gets passing work. And obviously we've seen guys like CMC, Kamara, uh, Eckler, um, we we talk ourselves into hey they've got, they'll continue to have contingent value even if they're not getting lion's share of the rushing work so maybe those are the types that are going for that you can probably you know, first plus right yeah. uh, but but the the cooks uh, the CMC excuse me the cook the Derrick Henry I'm I'm just curious again that, that finding that fine line as to you being okay with getting out I think it's an intriguing thing to talk about especially with the guys behind them because there's a whole slew of players age-wise who none of them go for firsts. 
Josh Jacobs isn't going for firsts. David Montgomery, a couple more. You weeks, can't you, you can't sell for first. Uh, Antonio Gibson, yeah. Cam Akers, Miles Sanders, um, Ceh, J- James Conner, like all those guys. It's, it's a it's a line of players right behind those guys who were again the the shining stars. None of them are going for. None of them can go for first right now. Josh Jacobs is balling out of his mind. Yeah, mm. you can't get a first. For you Josh get a couple Jacobs. more weeks of Josh Jacobs. Maybe somebody might maybe. be willing to instead of buying that older guy. Maybe they buy the Jacobs because he's only twenty four. So, so that's why this twenty, this twenty three and twenty four class, especially, I think it's, it's really intriguing how all this shakes out. So pl- pl- place your bets, people. Place I, your bets. I, I'm gonna just expound upon that that a little bit. Uh, you know, you just named all those guys, and I think the fact that none of those guys have the value like these guys had, or maybe have somewhat holding on to, has really, really given credence to the people who are saying running backs are irrelevant which you know right now it's not great i wouldn't really draft too many running backs in a startup which is not how i would initially came into this play in the game because it was different and the running back was so robust and the value was so good i think the fact that all those guys you just named and the running back value um kind of is down across the league because we haven't got the changing of the guard we haven't got those guys to come back in to make the running back the asset that we all once coveted um you know makes makes the the trade value of those guys almost weaker because nobody even nobody wants the running back to to begin with um so hell no i don't want these old guys Uh, so (laughs) hopefully we can get you know jacobs and miles are are and montgomery are looking like they maybe could hold value here for a while and be okay maybe we get jk dobbins back into the fold um, and he looks good, but the rest of those guys look like they're never going to really pan out to what we thought they would be. And maybe in these next two years, we can revitalize this thing and get back to being able to have an open strategy of draft startups of like, because robust running back this year was dead for me. Like that's, yeah. you know, was not happening. You know, it's just take the wide receivers and play it, play the field safe right now and go get the running back when you need it. Um, you know, typically I'd be okay with saying, hey, I'm fine with getting two or three running backs and and in the first couple of rounds but this year you know have to really fall in the right spots for me to grab them um so all right let's get out of here let's let's hop to another topic so we can maybe get a couple more in before we uh wrap up today 